Listen, I'm a big fan of simplicity. They did a fantastic job with this Mazda CX-90. It's not too complicated. It's not too over the top in terms of its design. It doesn't feel too, too much different than the previous design. It just feels a little bit bigger, feels a little bit <clears throat> beefier. However, I gotta say it's not complicated and that's kind of a bad thing. What I mean by that is, is that it doesn't have anything that you want to say, oh, wow, that's different. It's just, it feels like a very 2018 type of vehicle when you compare it to what you're seeing now in some of these vehicles with technology and all these new and crazy features. The CX-90 really doesn't have any of that. The exterior of the Mazda CX-90 is a major win. It doesn't look too, too much different than its predecessor. However, you could tell that it's got a brand new platform. It, you could tell that it got a little bit bigger, a little bit meatier. The design from the front, honestly, kind of reminds me of a Mercedes. It has sort of like a German front, but sort of like a Japanese back. It's not too, too futuristic looking. It's sleek. It's modern. It's elegant. It's not just so just, uh, what is that from the front or, uh, look at this back, how it's just sloped and just angular. Everything is in just moderate proportions. It's just very, very simple. Very, very cool to look at. The interior, they did a spectacular job on, especially if you're getting one of the higher up trims, the Turbo S, Turbo S Premium. They're using a lot of different materials. The buttons and controls on this thing, it's got really, really nice aluminum, a lot of different button types. You got a lot of push buttons. You got a lot of dial buttons. You got a lot of cool design cues in this Mazda CX-90. The interior, how the wood comes into play, how the leather has a little bit of cloth going through it, little stripes, little lines going through everything. It just, it's very, very well put together. When you talk about how they use the materials, they blended everything very, very nicely into each other. I love the fact that they're still using a classic shifter knob in this CX-90 when everybody else is using sort of like an electronic knob or some sort of button to engage the gear. So something you're going to love, let's talk about the fact that it starts at $40,000. On the select all-wheel drive, you're starting at roughly about 40 k It can go up all the way up to 60 k The Turbo S Premium, I don't know if it's called the Premium or the Premium Plus or the Preferred Plus. Let's call it the Premium Plus because I can remember it that way. You can build one out at a roughly around $60,000. And this one is going to be the most top of the line Mazda CX-90 that you could get. I don't know why you would necessarily need one. But hey, if you're going all out on the CX-90, you're probably much better off just getting just a BMW or an Audi or something that's just a little bit more technologically up to date than the CX-90. I would probably stay on the lower MSRP CX 90s and it seems like Mazda is doing a good job keeping those in stock at their dealerships. It gets about 24 miles per gallon city, 28 miles per gallon highway, which is huge because it's actually a turbo inline six. It gets about 280 horsepower. And if you upgrade to one of the turbo S models, you could actually get like 330 or 340 horsepower pumped out out of this CX-90, still a six cylinder. They do offer a plug-in hybrid variant though. A 462 mile range out of the tank coming out of an 18 gallon tank. Again, as I mentioned, you're not gonna be too crazy about the old infotainment system. Some of the lackluster driver assist tech. What I mean by lackluster is that you gotta put your hands on the steering wheel and tug according to da uh, Doug DeMuro. When it comes to the like the auto steering function of it, you got to remind it that you're still there and literally physically remind it that you're still there. However, according to Doug DeMuro, great handling and great performance coming out of the CX-90, which is very encouraging because Doug DeMuro does not really talk about SUVs. And with this regard, he probably talks about a Porsche or a McLaren, 
with these with these sort of words, but not so much entry level midsize SUVs. We've got about roughly 4,592 CX-90s on the ground in the United States at the moment. Compare that against 3,556 Honda Pilots, 4,146 Kia Tellurides, 3,880 Hyundai Palisades, 3,041 Toyota Highlanders. So trim by trim, we're only seeing about 198 Turbo Select about 607 preferred, 1,323 preferred plus, 799 premium, 427 premium plus. So what I want to suggest that you get is, is a CX-90 preferred plus. The MSRP that you're likely to see is about 47,870. Right now, the only rebates that are available are loyalty or conquest incentive, basically, if you've got a Mazda right now in the household, you could qualify for a thousand on a purchase or fifteen hundred if you're leasing, or if you've got a 2016 competitive vehicle, you could qualify for a five hundred dollar conquest incentive. Right now, Mazda is offering two point nine percent at sixty months, which is quite nice given the fact that we're seeing rising interest rates and just terrible auto loan rates coming out of banks. Right now, the lease program is not too shabby on the lower end trims. On the higher end trims, you're going to see much higher rates and it's going to make for much higher lease payments because Mazda doesn't want to incentivize those higher up trims. We've got a 61% residual at 36 months for 12,000 miles a year and a 0.00148 money factor, which translates to roughly just under a 4%. APR. You've got to excuse me, it's a little bit foggy here. I don't know why. Plugging this all in into the lease calculator and assuming we're giving just our inception fees, do it start. So your first payment, acquisition fee, dock fee, registration, all that stuff. Do it start. And assuming we're getting the CX90 at MSRP, we would be talking about 632 bucks a month. Again, you guys, that's not including tax. Again, this is assuming that you're giving your inception fees and getting it at MSRP. In the description below, you're gonna find a link so that you can shop around for pricing from local dealerships in your area on the Mazda CX-90. I wanna encourage you guys to shop to as many dealerships as you possibly can. Shop its competitors too, because there's quite a few options within this segment so i wouldn't just necessarily run and grab just the cx90 given the fact that it's not so so crazy of a body redesign not that much in terms of technological advancement i would probably keep your options open if you found this information useful please consider subscribing thank you so so much for watching guys we'll see you next time